Hello, so today I would like to read the Dikkajano Sutta, the advice to the layperson Dikkajano. Well, let's go right ahead. I have heard that on one occasion the Blessed One was dwelling among the Kolians. Now the Kolians have a town named Kakara Patta. There Dikkajano, the Kolian, went to the Blessed One and on arrival having bowed down to the Blessed One, sat to one side. As he was sitting there, he said to the Blessed One, We are lay people, enjoying sensuality, living crowded with spouses and children, using cassie fabrics and sandalwood, wearing garlands, scents and creams, handling gold and silver. May the Blessed One teach the Dhamma for those like us, for our happiness and our well-being in this life, for our happiness and well-being in lives to come. The Blessed One said, There are these four qualities, Tiger Paul, that lead to a lay person's happiness and well-being in this life. What for? Being consummate in initiative, being consummate in vigilance, admirable friendship, and maintaining one's livelihood in tune. And what does it mean to be consummate in initiative? There is the case where a lay person, by whatever occupation he makes his living, whether by farming, or trading, or cattle tending, or archery, or as a king's man, or by any other craft, is a clever, untiring added, endowed with discrimination in its techniques, enough to arrange and carry it out. This is called being consummate in initiative. And what does it mean to be consummate in vigilance? There is the case when a lay person has righteous wealth, righteous gain, righteously gained. Let me repeat, righteously gained. Coming from his initiative, his driving, his making an effort, gathered by the strength of his arm, earned by his sweat, he manages to protect it through vigilance, with the thought, how shall neither kings nor thieves make up with, his property, with this property of mine, nor fire burn it, nor water sweep it away, nor hateful airs make off with it. This is called being consummate in vigilance. And what is meant by admirable friendship? There is the case where a lay person in whatever town or village he may dwell spends time with householders or, house or householders' sons, young or old, who are advanced in virtue. He talks with them, engages them in discussions. He emulates consummate conviction in those who are consummate in conviction consummate in virtue in those who are consummate in virtue, consummate generos generosity in those who are consummate in generosity, and consummate discernment in those who are consummate in, the in discernment. This is called admirable friendship. And what does it mean to maintain one's livelihood in tune? There is the case where a lay person knowing the income and outflow of his wealth, maintains a livelihood in tune, neither a spendthrift nor a penny pincher, thinking, thus will my income exceed or thus will my income exceed my outflow, and my outflow will not exceed my income, just as when a, a weigher or his apprentice, when holding the scales, knows it has tipped down so much or uh, has tipped up so much. In the same way, the lay person, knowing the income and outflow of his wealth, maintains a livelihood in tune, neither a spendthrift nor a penny pincher, thinking, thus will my income exceed my outflow, and my outflow will not exceed my income. If 
a layperson has a small income but maintains a grand livelihood, it will be rumored of him, this clansman devours his wealth like a fruit tree eater. That's a note to the last point there. So a fruit tree eater is, it says here in the commentary, one who shakes off more fruit of a tree than he can possibly eat. Let's continue. If a layperson has a large income but maintains a miserable livelihood, it will be rumored of him, this clansman will die of starvation. But when a layperson, knowing the income and outflow of his wealth, maintains a livelihood in tune, neither a spendthrift nor a penipincher, thinking, thus will, my, thus will my income exceed my outflow, and my outflow w will not exceed my income. This is called maintaining one's livelihood in tune. These are the four drains of one's store of wealth. Debauchery in sex, debauchery in drink, debauchery in gambling, and evil friendship, evil companionship, evil camaraderie. Just as if there were a great reservoir with four inlets and four drains, and a man were to close the inlets and open the drains, and the sky were not to pour down proper showers, the depletion of that great reservoir would be expected, not its increase. In the same way, these are four drains of on one store of wealth, debauchery in sex, debauchery in drink, debauchery in gambling, evil friendship, evil companionship, evil camaraderie. These are the four inlets to one store of wealth. No debauchery in sex. No debauchery in drink. No debauchery in gambling. An admirable friendship. Admirable companionship. And admirable camaraderie. Just as if there were a great reservoir with four inlets and four drains, and a man were to open the inlets and close the drains, and the sky were to pour down sh proper showers, the increase of that great reservoir w could be expected, not its depletion. In the same way, these are the four inlets to one store of wealth. No debauchery in sex, no debauchery in drink, no debauchery in gambling, an admirable friendship, admirable companionship, an admirable con camaraderie. These tiger paw, I'm sorry, these tiger paw, which is uh, the name of Tikijano, are the four qualities that lead to a lay person's happiness and well being in this life. There are four qualities that lead to a person's happiness and well-being in lives to come. Which four? Being consummate in conviction, being consummate in virtue, being consummate in generosity, being consummate in discernment. And what does it mean to be consummate in conviction? There is the case where a disciple of the noble ones has conviction is convinced of the, of the Tathagata's awakening. Indeed, the Blessed One is worthy and rightly self-awakened, consummate in knowledge and conduct, well gone, an expert with regard to the world, unexcelled as a trainer for those people fit to be tamed, the teacher of divine and human beings, awakened, blessed. This is called being consummate in conviction. And what does it mean to be consummate in virtue? There is the case where a disciple of the noble ones abstain from taking life, abstain from stealing, 
abstains from illicit sexual conduct, abstains from lying, abstains from taking intoxicants that cause heedlessness or carelessness. This is called being consummate in virtue. And what does it mean to be consummate in generosity? There is the case of a disciple of the noble ones, his awareness cleansed of the stain of miserliness, living at home, freely generous, open-handed, delighting in being magnanimous, responsive to requests, delighting in the distribution of alms. This is called being consummate and generosity. And what does it mean to be consummate in discernment? There is the case where a disciple of the noble ones is discerning, endowed with discernment of arising and passing away, noble, penetrating, leading to the right ending of stress. This is called being consummate in discernment. These Dikajano are the four qualities that lead to a lay person's happiness and well-being in lives to come. Heedful at administering or working at one's occupation, maintaining one's life in tune, one protects one's store of wealth. A person, a person of conviction, consummate in virtue, magnanimous, free of selfishness, constantly clears the path to security in the lives to come. Thus, for one who seeks the householder's life, these eight qualities leading to the welfare and happiness both in li this life and in lives to come have been declared by the one whose name is Truth. And this is how for householders generosity and merit increase. And that was the Dikajanu Sutta Advice to Dikajanu. This was translated by Tanisarubiko. Thank you so much for listening and may you find true peace, happiness and freedom from suffering. And also keep practicing meditation. Thank you.